and good morning. Welcome to episode 25. Today is Friday, June the 9th. We're doing something a little bit different today. We're out on location or in the field, as we say. So we're just going to do a quick intro here in the studio. Uh, and then we'll be picking it up uh, in our first spot. So we're basically going around and looking at a few uh, sites where crimes happened. And yes, it's been done before, but it hasn't been done by us. So uh, we're going to do that today. So we'll be nicking off shortly from the studio and heading out in the field. And the first place we'll be heading to is Chippendale. So I'll let you think about that one, guys. And of course, before we go out in the field, I've got to mention our... Number one sponsor, Storm Video Studio at Gladesville, Monash Road, Gladesville. And Marcus, the man that's filming this right now, does all our stuff. He's remarkable. He can transfer all your old videos, all your old stuff, as we've, as we've advertised before. Anything with VHS, beta, everything uh, from the old school like that. He's, he's very rare and very good. And we also have another little bit of support from the Bite Cafe, also at Gladesville at Monash Road. Uh, brilliant food, uh, service, always friendly, lovely. They also do, I believe, on the weekend, on Saturday, I believe, they do a Korean barbecue uh, with chicken, beef, brisket. Is that correct, Marcus? Yes, I'm getting the nod again uh, on the weekend. So that's B The Bite Cafe at Monash Road uh, in Gladesville and, of course, Storm Video Studio. And, Marcus, we thank these people very much uh, for our support. And don't forget, swingers, of course, like and subscribe. Click, click. Uh, we're, we're, we need more uh, subscribers, as many as we can. Always looking for. But we do thank the 237 now subscribers we have. Doesn't sound like a lot, but as I always say, we're most grateful. So like and subscribe. Mac is old school on YouTube. Thank you, swingers. And we'll see you soon. Oh, look who's here. Thank you very much. That's Scarlett from the Bite Cafe on Monash Road. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, they're also giving us a lot of support as well uh, and, and are like a sponsor to us as well. So that's the Bite Cafe on Monash Road. Uh, brilliant coffee service, uh, great staff, really fantastic. So we really appreciate it. Ah, oh, beautiful, fantastic. That's the Bite Cafe on Monash Road, Gladesville. G'day, swingers, and welcome back. We're at Dangar Place, Chippendale, as promised. Today, we are doing a special on Warren Lee and Franchi, Rogerson, 1981, June 27th. We have a very special guest who you're quite familiar with. Uh, he's a good friend of ours and he's been on several times before. Popped up right next to me. Just but before I introduce him, hang on. Should we should we pat him down a bit here, John? Or what? Everybody knows him. Welcome, John. Mr. John Kellick. Hi. Now, John's John's here today and he's going to give his views and his opinions and thoughts of what exactly happened here and what went down. It's not the first time this has been done. Um, but we haven't done it before, so we thought we'd get out and about on location and do it. It's, it's become a legendary story in true crime. It has, hasn't it, mate? Yeah. Yes. And there's a lot, still a lot of doubts about a lot of things that have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what we're going to discuss. This is, this is the, the street where uh, Warren Lee and Franchi, he was 22 years old at the time, met with Rogerson. Uh, I believe Nettie dropped him just up the corner here, and he came down. Um, Let's get started on it, John. I believe it was definitely a setup, but I'm like today I was 14 at the time, swingers. So he was a young bloke at the time, 22. He was dropped at the corner up here um, by Nettie Smith, I believe, and proceeded down here where Rogerson and also there was a lot of unmarked police in cars as well uh, that were waiting in this area. I believe it was a setup. What, let's let's start with you, John. What do you think, mate? You know a, a lot more about it than myself. Well, well the uh, the beginning of the story is that uh, Lamb Franchi and uh, Smith met in jail, and uh, yep. they got out about the same time in '82. Now, it's a fact that Lamb Franchi was selling drugs for Ned. And yes. Ned, Ned was uh, supplied um, a high heroin, yeah, and a high amount of uh, heroin at the time. Yep. Uh, Lamb Franchi was selling for him. Now, the fact is that um, the police 
let it be known later on that uh, apparently that they said he was wanted for some bank robberies. According to his girlfriend, Sally Ann Huxter, um, she said that he never did any armed robberies because the fact is if you're selling a lot of heroin, um, yep. that you don't need to be doing armed robberies. Now, it is a fact that Land Friends, as far as I know, uh, the story is um, pretty well substantiated that Land Francie ripped off another drug dealer for 37000 Yep. Now, Rodison, according to sources, uh, Rodison wanted that money. Yeah. Uh, apparently it was owed to Rodison. And he said he couldn't do any more jail, this uh, Land Francie. Land yep. Francie said he couldn't do any more jail. So, Smith arranged for the two of them to meet up and settle it. Yeah, he, he did He did take, uh, Sally said he, he took um, a substantial amount of money with yeah, him. I think uh, it was to, 10 or yeah, 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 I, I believe so. And, uh, but she said he didn't uh, take a gun. Now, the fact is that Ned also said that uh, he frisked him and yep. he didn't have a gun. Now, Ned said that. Uh, now, what happened from there, there's a lot of controversy about it. But what happened is that Land Franchi finished up dead, yeah. like lying in the, there with two bullets in him. Now, what had happened, Rodison had staked the place out, there were 18 police, uh, most of them were uh, in vehicles around the surrounding area. Yeah. Uh, there were two parked uh, further down, um, one was Detective Harden, Harding, yep. was um, former, I think at the, at the time was uh, Harlem Squad. Uh, he was there. He was quite well known. I think he's he retired was, now. Yeah, he's yeah. retired. He does some COVID podcasts. Yeah, yeah. No, I've yeah. seen him. I'll just take that look. I've seen him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, Sorry, uh, swingers. We've got a bit of traffic. Yep. He was there with, uh, with another detective. I forget his name. And uh, now their version, Rogerson's version was that uh, Land Francis said, I'm here to do business. Um, Rogerson said, uh, there's going to be no business. I'm here to arrest I'm you. I'm here to arrest you. Yeah. Um, he said that Land Francie then stepped back um, and went to go for a gun. Yep. Or went for a gun. Uh, Rodison said he had uh, a pistol behind his back, tucked into his waistband, pulled it out, and fired a shot into his stomach. Uh, yeah, hit, him, hit him in the chest. Yep. Hit him in the chest. Um, he said then he staggered back and he thought that uh, he hadn't. Uh, had mortally wounded him yeah. and shot him when again. the second one to make shot sure. Shot him in the neck. Now, uh, he said there was three to four seconds between the shots. Uh, this is substantiated by the two detectives uh, in the car. Uh, this was contradicted by two students yeah. who lived uh, not far away in, uh, I think it was Cleveland Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah which is just yeah, yeah. a stone throw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in a block of units. They, they said that it was 11 to 13 seconds. Now this is pretty important because the fact is that when he fell to the ground, um, if Rodgers come over and shot him again, you've got to ask why. Yeah. You've got 18 police around. Uh, the man's wounded, finally unarmed because if he did it's, have a gun, it's, it's gone. It's a lot of overkill. It's a lot of overkill. Yeah. And, uh, if there were 11 to 13 seconds, it would have give him time to do that. Hmm. Um, and it's a bloke really, no more than about my size, I believe, Liam Franchi as well. And let's talk about the gun. What now gun the, did the, he this, have? The, this, this is, is interesting. This is yeah. important. It was a silver, one of the old silver gun, only um, it was defective. It was 80 years old. Now, he, this is an interesting point that hasn't come out. Exactly. Or, or, or it may have come out, but it's sort of, uh, it hasn't been given a, a lot of discussed. Yeah. Discussed yeah. 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 The fact is, it's an 80 year old gun. It's defective. Uh, mechanism on the trigger. Yep. And uh, definitely faulty. Now, the funny thing is that Land Francis' father was a gunsmith. He lived not far from here in Camperdown. Yep. Had a safe full of guns. Land Franchi had access to that safe. Yep. He used to, his brother said that he used to, and, and I know people also uh, who said the same thing, they've been shooting with Land Franchi. Yeah. Uh, he and he was brought up with guns. Yeah, he, he's he's, not, he's now, knowledgeable of guns. Why yeah. the hell are you going to go? to a meeting with a detective who's famous for having killed a couple of... He's knocked a few blokes uh, already. Very yeah. dangerous, uh, well-known, feared by, by many in the underworld. Yep. And you're going to a meeting with this guy yep. with a gun, supposedly going there, that's defective, an 80-year-old, when your father's got a, gun, a, a safe full of guns yep. that you've got access. Yep. Now, I, I think that, to me... It's suspicious, straight, straight and away. So when it went to the... When it went to the uh, coroner's court, the coroner 
try to push a good verdict for Roger Snow over the line by saying, look, there's no doubt that he was killed by Roger. Yes. There's no doubt about that. But in the line of duty, you may find it was in the line of duty, or you may Slash find it was self defense. defense. Yeah. yeah. The jury found that Roger had killed him, but that was it. They didn't say. So they didn't go any further. No, they didn't go any further. Which and means, that, that put which a means huge they had question mark over Absolutely, yeah, John. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they had their doubts too, didn't they? Oh, yeah. definitely, definitely. And I just think that this is this is um, something that they'll, I don't think it'll ever really be settled unless Rodison gets up and says, look, this is how yeah. it really happened. Because there's a lot of There's doubt. two chances of that, I think. But yeah. <laughs> there's two chances of that. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Uh, Rod Rodison actually testified against me in uh, '79 in a trial and sent me down with four sevens. Yeah, and uh, I think out of the way here, I'm going to get run over here, swingers. I'm just we've got cars coming everywhere now. Yeah, and I really do think that trial, if we had it again today, that uh, the jury might believe me instead of him. But yeah, at that yeah. stage, he was a decorated officer, and they're going to believe him. But I think Rodgers has uh, been proven he tells a few fibs. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and. Uh, He's told a few yeah. things, I think, so, and yeah. What, what, what eventuated from this too, I think it's very important we should mention this. Sure. Is that Sally, Sally Ann, the girlfriend, was, she was pretty convinced that Rodison had murdered uh, Absolutely. So and she, she was pretty fucking courageous she too, was wasn't courageous, she? Yeah. She got up there and she, 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 she was a prostitute. Life. She was yeah. a prostitute. She was um, a working girl. Working girl. But she um, gave Lan Franchi credit for get, getting her off. Yeah, the, off, the, off, off the smack of the heroin. Yeah. She got off it. Now, um, but she went on to 60 Minutes after the killing. And, That's right. Uh, and she got up and accused Rodison of it and also accused a lot of other police about a lot of things. Oh, she it. dropped, she was she was on Dynamite. They she, did an interview yeah. at the old Sydney Hilton. Yeah, yeah. 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 She yeah. was on Dynamite. And she, she was um, she, she a pretty good talker, um, yeah. pretty convincing, uh, a lot of stuff she said. But nothing really happened over it, but uh, from her point of view. But what did happen is from there, Yep. We had, they formed ICAC. Yep. That's, and then they formed, they had that uh, Woodraw Commission in the Police yep. Corruption. That and, was huge. And the yeah. Woodraw Com Commission actually found that there were so many police involved in drug selling, rip offs, bashings, this, that. There was a lot of police committed suicide, a lot of got out of the force, yeah. a lot were sacked. The shame um, or yeah, your look, family look, or it whatever. Really, yeah. It really changed the whole thing. That, yeah. That Woodrow yeah. I think the system's a lot better today because of that. Because, yeah. But, um, and I think you've got to give Sally Ann a lot of credit for that. But yeah. She, she was found five years after um, the Land Franchi or anything. Yeah. She was found dead in the uh, pond at um, Centennial, Centennial Park. Centennial Park, there, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, we don't know who did that. They say it was yeah. Nettie Smith. They, they say yeah. it was Nettie. But he was no, the accused. He, he, he was um, charged with that, but... He was. He, he, he was put his he put his hand up for in, in prison there. Remember well, they he, recorded confessed, him, he confessed. But then he said he was bullshitting to promote a book. Well, or that's something, right. So yeah, they had him recorded. And yeah, uh, he said he did it deliberately. He, he apparently admitted to a lot of stuff. Yep. And some of it he didn't do. So yeah. Um, anyway, the fact is he was acquitted by a jury. Uh, so, so we we can't get on this program and say he did it. No, that's right. Um, We're only just yeah. giving our views yeah, and, and I, opinions I, I'm and just information. Just giving a history of, of what had happened. Yeah. Um, and that, that's a pretty accurate history of, of what happened here yep. in Danger Place. And uh, another a quick thing I want to bring up too, John, with the shooting, there was a couple of students not far from here yeah, yeah. on, on, the, on um, just up the road. Yeah. yeah, and they heard two shots. But just another interesting bit. Well, they, they said it was eleven to thirteen seconds, seconds between apart. Between two shots. So you've already hit the bloke somewhere yeah. around right. here. Now, uh, Rodison said he staggered back. Yep. And he was concerned that he hadn't. That sort of uh, put him out of action. Yeah. So he said. He Plus, you've got 18 backups yeah, with that, shotguns. Most of them weren't in sight, but they were around. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But, but the two, there were two cops that were in sight who came up just in, behind in, the vehicle. They, they, they yeah. drove up in the car, and yep. Land French, Frenchy saw saw them come yeah. up. Yeah. There was another one crouched down behind a car with a shotgun. With a, with a double just barrel. Just yeah, around, yeah, yeah. So there was. He knew of, he was fucked. There, there was he knew he was outnumbered. This, this yeah, is the funny. Yeah. Bits in it, isn't so it? So what you're going to do? You're going to pull out a defective gun. Yep. That doesn't work. And if it does, you're good for and one shot. And he knows shot. that this guy. Yeah. What he's going to do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right. not going to stuff around. No. And you've been hit once. Yeah. And then you've got two witnesses, yeah. swingers, that say maybe up to 14 seconds yep. apart. I don't understand why you go shot, again. Then he got shot in the, in, the, in the throat. 
Yeah, which would have which would have finished you off. So sure, there, yeah. there's some controversy about where we were shot in the throat first, and then the chest. Right, said the chest first, then the throat. Yeah. Uh, yep. But there's some. Uh, the two shots of, in that area yeah. will put you down and shut oh, you up for right. sure. Well, yeah. that's what killed him the second shot. Uh, and I'm surprised with Sally Sally Ann that she lasted five years. Well, I after think she got that. She got truth. that red hot. Yeah. Um, she was on all the media. She was. A celebrity, she was like a movie star. She was, yeah. And she had the looks. And courageous. She, had she said bit that, of charisma, oh, I'm going to cop you know? it. So I'm going to cop it. Yeah. You know, she, she kind of knew. You well, know, like. Look, the thing is, Sally played both sides of the fence. You can't do that. Yeah, that's right. She yeah. played that side and that side. You, yep. you can't do it. She, she was sleeping with a cop as well. Yeah, right. You know, and uh, and the, the thing is, but she was a prostitute. Yeah. But she had a daughter. Yep. And, and she, she loved that daughter, and uh, her and her and Lamb Franchi, uh, according to Sally, were uh, saving up to go overseas and starting your life. Yeah so, yeah. so you know, all that went down a drain, and it's amazing how lives and dreams can just be uh, destroyed in one act. And this and, is what and happened. This, yeah. And Lamb Franchi was only 22 years. Yeah, he was, was a kid. A kid. He was. He a was kid. only a kid. Look, really. Most people who really. knew him said he was a good-hearted guy. Yep. Um, it, the, they probably wanted out, to make a quick buck. Look, you know. They've thrown out the wrong image of him. I don't yeah. believe he's Robin Banks. I, yeah. I don't believe that. Uh, and the, the thing is that uh, being a young guy, um, just getting out of jail, yep. he's got nothing else to do. Um, he yep. sold drugs. It was wrong. There's no doubt it's wrong what he's doing. But the yep. thing is, uh, he wasn't going around shooting people. Oh, no. Like I think on that meeting that day, we can only assume he was just trying to really get out of some shit. Get out of some shit. Here's a bit of money. Just yeah. leave me alone. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell yeah, me drugs. I think so. and, and the, the worst thing he could have done was getting mixed up with Nettie Smith. He, he was out of his class. Out of his league, yeah. He was out of his league with it. And, yeah. uh, and the thing is that um, it just, uh, from the time he was hooked in with Ned, um, Ned was calling the shots, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. It. No, but, uh, mate, it's interesting, and we've all got our own views. Um, it was some bloody interesting information, wasn't it? Um, of what happened at the time and the space of the shots. and. Well, uh, I reckon you could get four investigators all different. Yep. Get him in to go through all the facts, and that all come up with different versions. Exactly. It, it's it's something that we'll never really know. And if you dig in deep, a lot of characters come into into play. Yeah. That exactly. we haven't mentioned here. Yep. Uh, and I'm not going to mention here, but um, no, no, they're, fair they're enough. On the uh, sort of peripheral of this story. Yep. That's it. And but it, but it is an interesting story, and it's been done many times before. But we wanted to to clarify this. Well, I don't know. We know a lot of the facts haven't come out, like we said today about that gun. Yeah. You know, I haven't heard much about that gun. Defective gun. Yeah. The, 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 the father the between, black between the shots. The father of the black uh, gunsmith. Yeah. Lived. Up. He's not going to own a piece and of he shit. The mile like, away. He's not going to. Yeah. 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 He's going to have safe full of guns. And, and you know, being brought up in the seventies and eighties, most people had a rifle or yeah. something at the house. Oh, we had, another we had another thing we didn't mention too: there were, there were no fingerprints found on a gun. Yeah, yeah that's just uh, very weird. I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you've gone, yeah. Oh yeah. So John, we're going to have to wrap it up shortly, but there's just one more point we should bring up as well, which is I, I find bloody unbelievable: the gun, the gun. Now we mentioned it a minute ago. The gun. The gun. Completely clean of prints. Completely how, how clean of prints. How does, that how does that happen when the incidents just happened here in, in the laneway? Um, we'll, we'll dive over, John, in case we get run over, mate. Look, there's another car coming. <laughs> but the incident just happened in the laneway, and the gun, the gun, the old, 80 year old defective, defective, defective weapon, trigger, yeah. Possible yeah. one round. Yeah. I'm no, uh, I'm not a criminal, uh, uh, you know, criminologist. But what's your thoughts on that, mate? My thoughts are that, oh, no, no prints. It, it just doesn't make sense. Someone's wiped it. I mean, for and Christ's sake. This is probably one of the reasons the jury, the uh, jury, yep, at, at the coroner's wouldn't wouldn't come in with self-defence. Yep. Or wouldn't come in with uh, doing his job because they they would have thought, why were no prints? Exactly. The, the other thing is that you've got to ask. Um, I don't know where we'd come out, you know, at the coroner's court, but you've got a farmer who yep. is a mile away. He's got a safe full of guns that you've accessed many times going yep. shooting with the brother. Yep. And yet you take an 80 year old defective gun to a meeting with a known killer. Who's killed at least, who's killed at, least at least two people at, least two, at this stage. We, we know yeah. there's a lot more than that, but yep. uh, at least two. And I mean, 
it just doesn't make sense. No, no, it doesn't. And this is the thing with me. It's just happened, and there's a gun, completely sparkling clean. Why, why did two students come out of the blue? Yep. You know, just girl students who got no reason to lie, so it yep. took 11 or 13 seconds between the shots. Yeah. You know, why did, why did that happen? Why did that there, happen? There's just so yeah. many holes in the case. There so is. Many holes. There is. And, and then, why, why would he be doing robbing banks? Why would he be robbing banks yep. when he's selling heroin? He's selling heroin Nettie on Smith. the street. Eddie Smith had an unlimited supply of heroin. Yep. Uh, everybody knew that. He yep. Had the, he had the green light at that stage. Yep. Had the green light. And, and, uh, and, and maybe he had this old, I'll just watch this car, maybe he had this old defective gun. If he had to collect on some smack, just sort of show it, knowing it's a piece of shit, you know what I mean? As a deterrent, maybe he was doing stuff like that. Like you say, I don't think he was holding up banks and stuff like that. No, he, but... but when Frenchy or Frenchy... I, I, just, I just doubt that he had the gun at all, because yeah. um, he wouldn't take it. No. Would, yep. Anyway, Ned said... And that was his job to pat him down. Yeah. So if Ned pat him down, he's what? He hasn't got where did he have it hit? All of a sudden, the gun comes yeah. up with no prints on it whatsoever. Yeah. I don't know. So Sally Ann did yeah. say he did have a gun. I remember that on a certain interview. I'm not saying whether it was that gun. I, I thought she said she got rid of it. Yeah. I, I, thought, I, I thought she said uh, after it she got rid of it because then they. Uh, they yeah. Were, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it just seems right. like, doesn't it? Like but that, with the right. age of the weapon, it was a, it was a plant, and you yeah. know. There are so many different questions. versions, and yep. so yep. many questions that are up there that haven't been answered. Yeah, I can't believe the coroner, yep. knowing what he knew, would say, try to get it over the line of self-defense. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Some coroners are good, and they go, they they go on the evidence. Yeah. Some don't. That, that one obviously didn't I yep. and that was enough that that's what set Sally and and, uh, and, and the brother because they said look even the jury saying they're sort of saying look this is who he's looking into it. yeah you know and uh, it's 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 very suspicious and as I've said before I'm surprised Sally lasted I think she's too hot to touch yeah uh, like, she was like a movie star at that stage and the night she disappeared apparently she said to her flatmate I'll be back shortly I'm just going to meet someone uh, it looked like she was just going to, to do a deal, so a drug deal, and uh, never came yeah, back. Yeah, well, that, so. that's all hearsay, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's all hearsay. Yeah. But, but, look, the thing is that Sydney has got so many incredible crime stories. Oh, it does, and mate, this yeah. Is just, this is just one of them. Chip on the and, iceberg. And, you know, yeah. what? you should start looking at There's so many. There's so yep. many good ones out there that you've got the equipment, you, you've got the, uh, the knowledge now to do it, so you start putting out some podcasts, and get behind the scenes because they don't always get it right. They d when, no, you know. no. And look at the history of the rocks, John. Around the rocks, the history of that area alone oh, with, with, with look, criminals so, and crime. So many and, stories. Oh, so many mate. Stories. We've, just, we've just done a chip on the iceberg, as I always say again today with this. Um, these, these are just some of our views. We yeah. wanted to add to this uh, some of John's views. He's a very knowledgeable fellow on uh, Australian criminal history. These were. This is just our version of the day, and some questions, isn't it, John? That well, look, are I, very I, suspicious. I, I, can, can I mention too? Please, that, mate. Uh, yeah, I, I'm writing a book. Uh, actually, number six. Number six. Number six, and folks. It was told to me um, by Ron Isherwood, who originally wrote it. Yep. Uh, and I've um, sort of edited it and uh, redone it to an extent. Yep. So we worked on it together. Now this incident is in the book because Ronnie knew. Ronnie knew uh, he was a good friend of Frenchies. Yep. Now, yep. And he knows straight away that that was bullshit, bullshit. about the gun because yep. he knows that Frenchie was quite adept, adept yep. with, uh, with, with weapons. Yep. And had access to them. So I'm not sure the police were aware of that. Yeah. Uh, that's where their story is. There's pretty, just so pretty, many contradictions. Yeah, there's, so, yeah. there's so many contradictions. But, um, I'd like to say that, that that book will be out in a few months. And, and not, What's it called, John? What's it? It, it, it's called Five Crime Swingers. Yeah. John's number six yeah. six yeah. book. Yeah. You're a noted author now, and then people say, "Oh, you're, you're a bank." Actually, uh, you're an author, and you were a bank robber years ago. But you are a noted author. I'm going to I'm going to move just in case the little fellow gets run over. Uh, we, sh we should point out to people that um, this has totally changed. Um, this has it, totally you changed. Know, you wouldn't know Dango Place now. Um, it's it's apartments. And, and it's, it's just changed totally. And that, that's why we haven't gone and said, look, this is exactly where it happened. Because yeah, it's, it happened it's, it's just changed so in much. this street here. But so. it happened right where we are. Yeah. Yeah, in so, Dango Place. Right yeah. 
Sorry, I'm missing the cars again. So anyway, swingers, look, we better wrap it up, John, before we get run over. Thank you so good, much good for your, your thoughts and input today. Uh, please, swingers, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Uh, we thank Storm Video Studios, our studio, our uh, sponsor, and Marcus for our location. We're out in the field today. Thank and you, John, Marcus. it's a beautiful day. A little bit brisk, but... Uh, bit brisk, yeah. We should have brought Rocky. Yeah. We should have brought yeah, Rocky, yeah. John. <laughs> He would have loved it. But uh, so, yeah, Dangar Place. Uh, this is um, uh, the Rogerson and uh, Frenchy, Frenchy, yeah. Frenchy, as yeah. they call yeah, him. Frenchy, yeah, Frenchy. Uh, uh, special. And we just wanted to throw a few things on that and get some facts there. Well, some facts from, from our point of view what happened. That was 1981, 27th of June. So. Yeah, and we, we put the facts up there, and you can. Uh, it's up for you guys to decide. Everyone's got, like I say, a million well, opinions. Well, there, there's it's just a lot ours. of different yep. crimes that, that we're not sure about. Yep. Yeah. I Absolutely. Think, I think this one. This yeah. One, this one. Definitely. Yeah. All right, swingers. Well, that was episode 25. Stand by for the big one that I've been promoting coming up at the Bayview Hotel, which will be episode 26. Uh, with Mr. Graham Abo Henry and a special guest. It'll be a, a big show there as well. That'll be a ripper. It'll be a good show, yeah, mate. And as usual, I think this is your fifth time. We're, we're old friends oh, now, fifth time on. Two, Something two, like that. <laughs> yeah, I was never any good at maths, mate. <laughs> but thanks again, John. You're right. a bloody good Thank man. You, uh, thanks again, swingers, and we will see you all soon. Bye. Bye. G'day Swingers again, we're back from Chippendale, from our uh, Land Franchi and Rogerson special, uh, with commentary and, and views from uh, John Killick. John brought up to me before we came back, it may have been a, a small piece in it where he said 82, it was 1981, I know that, he knows that, sometimes you make mistakes, if so, please, please ignore it Swingers, it was 81, so... It's no big deal. So that was episode 25. We've got episode 26 coming up. The big one very shortly from the green room at the Bayview in a couple of weeks time. This is our biggest show yet. Uh, technically wise, financially wise. Thank God we have Marcus. Uh, don't forget Storm Video Studio at Gladesville. Like and subscribe please to us. Um, and we'll be back uh, real soon with number 26. We just wanted to do something a little different today and get out on the field. We hope you enjoyed it, swingers. Cheers for now. Bye.